Hi everyone, in this uh, five video segments that we'll be going through to the, uh, today, uh, we'll be going through this topic called mathematical induction. So in this first of this series of five video clips, I'll be going through the introduction to this topic called mathematical induction. Now what is actually mathematical induction? Now mathematical induction is one very very good mathematical proof that allows us to prove a statement involving the n, which is a positive integer. Now let's download the handout on 3.1 on the introduction to mathematical induction. Okay? You see on the, your handouts that it says that mathematical induction is a method to prove statements that cannot be demonstrated readily by a direct argument. So for example, we like to show this result. Okay. You probably have seen that this result before. This is a very, very famous sum to the first n terms of an arithmetic progression with the first term 1 and the common difference 1. Okay. We are going to use this method of manual induction to prove this statement. Okay. There are generally four steps to mathematical induction. The first step is to state the statement that we want to prove. So we write down in this manner. Let Pn be the statement that we want to prove. So what is the statement that we want to prove? We want to prove that summation of r from 1 to n is n over 2, 1 plus n. So we will write down the statement. Summation r goes to 1 to n of r equals n over 2, 1 plus n. And we must tell them that our n value is only a restricted to positive integer. Okay? Positive integer. So this will be the step 1 of the mathematical induction. Okay? And how about step 2? Step 2 is basically to verify that the proposition or the statement is true for the smallest value of n. So in this case, because we are trying to prove that it's true for all positive integers, the smallest positive integer will be n equals to 1. Okay? So how do we prove that this statement is true for n equals to 1? We will say the following. When n equals to 1, okay, we look at the left hand side. The left hand side is given by summation r equals to 1 to 1 because n is 1. Okay. r and there is only one term in this summation so if sub r equals 1 inside you get 1. Okay. Now we take a look at the right hand side. Okay. The right hand side for this statement is this one. So when n equals to 1 what will happen? It will be 1 over 2 1 plus 1, right? Okay. So we will have it as 2 over 2, which gives you 1. So this tells me that the left hand side equals the right hand side. Okay. Right? And hence P1 is true. Huh? The statement P1. P1 is the statement for Pn when n is 1. Okay, so P1 is true. So this actually is the step 2 of our induction statement. That is to try to prove that the first statement is true, okay, when n is 1. Now step 3 is basically the most important body of the proof. It's called the forming an implication or chain. Okay? And what is this uh, step 3 says? Step 3 says that we assume that pk okay, is true for some k element of positive integer. Okay. Now why, how is it that we can assume that pk is true for some k element of positive integer? Because in step 2, we have actually shown that p1 is true. Okay. So that means when we assume that pk is true for sum, this sum could easily represent k equals 1. Okay? So we can assume that because there exists such a value of k. So if we assume that pk is true for some k, that means that summation r equals to 1 
to k of r equals k over 2, 1 plus k. How do I get this statement? Because we assume pk is true, we can then replace the n by k and assume that this statement is true. No? Assume that this statement is true. And what do we want? We want to show that pk plus 1 is also true. Okay? So how do we show that pk plus 1 is true? So we want to show that pk plus 1 is true. Okay. And what does that mean? That means that the summation r equals to 1 to k plus 1 of r equals, you replace the n by k plus 1, okay, right? which is of course equivalent to k plus 1 over 2, 2 plus k, right? 2 plus k. Right? And how do we prove this result? Okay? We look at n equals to k plus 1. We start with the left hand side and try to prove that it's equivalent to the right hand side. Okay? So when n is k plus 1, the left hand side is this. Okay? But we know that the summation from 1 to k plus 1 can be written as a summation from 1 to k plus the k plus 1 term of this. Okay, Why is that so? Because when you summation from 1 to k plus 1 of r, it means you put r goes 1, r goes 2, r goes 3 until r goes k and r goes k plus 1. Whereas for this summation here, it's a summation from 1 to k. So it's substituting r goes 1, 2, 3 until k. So there is a term that is found in this summation that is not found here. And that is actually the last term when you put the r to be k plus 1. Okay? So that's why this equation holds. Now this term here has been assumed to be k over 2, 1 plus k. All right? So we will make use of this result that we have assumed to prove our pk plus 1 statement. Okay? So we will get as k over 2, 1 plus k plus k plus 1. Okay. Now of course they have the same common factor. You can take out the k plus 1. Okay. You take out half as well. What is left is k plus 2. Okay. k plus 2. And do a quick simplification. k plus 1 over 2, 2 plus k which is exactly the same as the right-hand side that we want to show. Okay. The entire body here, starting from assuming that pk is true for some k all the way until proving that pk plus 1 is true, is what we call the step 3 of our induction. Okay. And finally, the last step of induction is to, to make a conclusion. So what is going to be the conclusion? We say since P1 is true and PK is true, imply PK plus 1 is true. Okay, by induction, Pn is true for all n element of positive integer. Why is it that we can make such a conclusion that Pn is true for all n? Because you started with assuming that P1 is true. Then you assume that Pk is true and you manage to show that Pk plus 1 is true. Now what does it tell us? Because P1 is true, P2 will be true because of the statement that we have proven. And because P2 is true, P3 will be true. And because P3 is true, P4 will be true. So in other words, together with P1 being true, as well as the step 3 that we have shown, we are able to conclude that Pn is true for all n 
element of positive integer. And that is actually what we call a step four of this principle called mathematical induction. Okay? So I hope that this particular segment will give you a good introduction to this method of mathematical induction. In the next few video clips, we will be actually be going through some examples of how we can use this method to prove certain results as well. Thank you.